Every year about this time, I wonder if there's any place as beautiful as New England in the fall. Uh, what a beautiful day. Leaves falling and colored. This can be, it looks like it's going to be one of those special years. And um, it's such a pleasure to be here, uh, to be on this earth, actually, if you want to put it in a, in a perspective. And um, this is one of those great gifts of the Creator the changing colors, the changing seasons. Um, of course, we in the North Country like it when everybody stays home so that they don't clog up the highways peeping at the leaves. That's us. That's us being cranky, I guess. Huh? So Sue's out there painting. She loves this little cranberry bog. And um, I um, uh, wasn't asked if I would do this for her. I've done it for her before. I just asked if I could use her uh, her uh, photograph, uh, the photograph of herself in place with her site there that she's painting from. She had asked me for a critique, and um, and it uh, was just a general critique. But I but I wanted to uh, to uh, give her an opportunity to think through the um, main line again. Um, the mainline idea in composition, this will be the third time I think we've done it, if not more, but I think the third time we've done it. We did one called Amy and uh, one with Jerome in it, uh, showing you what a great mainline thing is, you know, and so I'm using the same kinds of diagrams. But um, we're just going to look at the little beautiful uh, X cranberry bog. I think it's not in working condition anymore, that place where she loves to paint near her home. And, uh, but... Um, it still provides some really beautiful uh, uh, color changes in the fall, which the photographs here don't even begin to approximate. The human eye is amazing, and so is pigment uh, to the extent that we uh, use it well. So let's just go to Sue's and, um, and, uh, and talk about, just use, use her as a takeoff point. This is the spot, this is the cranberry bog. And, um, and uh, you see the stream going through, there's probably an irrigation uh, canal traveling through it, and um, on the right, you can see what she's chosen to be her um, uh, picture. This is an approximation. I'm not being perfect about it, uh, and I'm not using it to uh, correct drawing or anything like that, but I do want to exit the picture. I'll try to use my arrow slowly. I do want to make sure I exit the picture about where in both the number of dots here and how far over this way on the frame she exits. So I want to do that approximately like, and but at the same time I want to get the, the air up here above the trees to be about what she has. And I wind up with what I wind up with in terms of the center marks here. Uh, so uh, I'm showing you that roughly this is that same rectangle uh, pushed down to the size of the frame. So it's, you can see it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close and close enough for what we're trying to do. So let's talk main lines. Probably the hardest thing for people to do is to recognize that nature's got it all. You don't have to be a creative person. <laughs> you don't have to be the creator. In fact, you're not the creator, we're the discoverer. That's what true, so characteristic of so much of human endeavor. <laughs> you know, that's one of the, somebody was asking me, they're talking about going, or talk, talking to one of my students, I guess, and asking about whether uh, they should go to an art school because they wanted to fulfill their creative impulse. And um, <laughs> and I, I, I have never... Uh, I've never engaged that prospect. You know, the, the, the creative, what is that again? Uh, it's the discovered. And so the, you're, you're not the creator, actually. You're the emulator and uh, in everything we do. <laughs> and when you're going to become the creator and all that sort of thing, at least in terms of painting, you leave off what we're doing and you become something else. Uh, but I'm not going to talk politics, so to speak. <laughs> Uh, the art world being what it is, uh, this this is the painting world, and this is the world of picture design in a rectangle, okay? So this is a site outdoors, and several of you, I'm doing this partially too for because of several people in my composition class uh, in the evening are prefer landscape painting. And I'm trying to show you how to break down, how to f discover the main action in a landscape and then what to do with it, okay? So that's the theme of this. So obviously, it should be obvious, it, you know, if I'd shown you this before I put main lines, I didn't show you this before, didn't I? <laughs> if I show you this before I put main lines here, I didn't quite do that, did I? I probably should have just showed you this one by itself first, this bottom one. But if you look at this by yourself, 
you're going to find, oh, by the way, let me just say again, remind you that Jerome is the person who used that expression. I've never seen it anywhere else uh, before him. And I don't know that it's probably, it probably does exist before him. I mean, it sure, surely does because he's actually the aggregate. He's the He's really brought together a lot of knowledge, uh, maybe as much as ever existed in one place when it comes to composition. And um, uh, But I don't know how much he said. The one or two things we have is that uh, every picture has, every every good painting has a main line and um, and most a secondary line, uh, or, or at least a secondary line or something to that effect. So where do you get your main line, right? Where does it come from? Well, it comes out of what you see. So you can see, if you look at the bottom one with me, you can see that there's this beautiful line. Now, the general gesture, this thing sweeping out of here is why, well, this is why she painted it. She loves, she said, the color of this hillside. She just loved the colors here. Uh, but but a abstractly speaking, there's a reason to paint this. And by the way, that's why she said she pushed this, this water over into the right corner. She really wants more of this, which is perfectly okay, right? Depending on how you end the game, right? <laughs> So we're just saying, what is the most beautiful line in this picture? Because that's what a line is. If we're doing aesthetic work, we're trying to find the beauty, right? We're trying to find the beauty and, and then unify around it. So that's precisely what we're doing right here. We're searching out this line. See that? We're finding this line here is absolutely the most beautiful thing as a, as a gesture. As a ge Remember what we mean by line is this, right? This idea of, of a sweep, a, a movement, a gesture. So this is it. And it's got to be enough... Uh, uh, it's got to be. It's got. It's got to be. It's going to exist in all through the painting. It's going to be used throughout the whole painting. It's to to organize the painting linearly, right? Main. When you say main line, you don't just mean the strongest one, but you mean the one that winds up being most repetitious. And because other times, well, you might get two or three other odd lines in there, like you might have. You might have just the idea of this diagonal here, and have another diagonal here, and whatever. Find several of those things, and it may not be the most beautiful one. But we're looking for the one that we see most frequently in the picture and it's based on the biggest, most beautiful one, the strongest, most beautiful one. So, so I see a line right here that I find connects with this, right? This long line through here. And think great line, think long line, okay? And then I say, well, how in the heck do I explain this though? Because what it looks funny up here is there's a big W that's symmetrical and here I am coming out of the right side. How do I get into this thing with this symmetrical picture? Well, it might be a symmetrical background. And I might have to move all these trees is what somebody, one of you guys probably would say to me. So I'm going to just suggest to you that what we're going to do to follow this is just we're just going to draw lines on it. So here we are. We're actually articulating the line the best I can with this stuff that you get with the drawing program, presentation program. And then I shoot a line down through here uh, to, try to, to try to get what we're looking for is multiple lines, right? So you can see what I'm going to call the givens, right? These are strong lines. You can't escape from them. They'll eat your lunch if you don't, stick, if you don't obey them, right? Another strong line in this picture, by the way, is this. Another one is this one by itself. But in terms of the line of beauty, shall we call it that, uh, it's this one right here. And, it's, and it, we could try to force it up into here, but it doesn't seem to want to go. So I see it feeling a natural sweep around through here. And I'm wondering about that. How if I put this down here, put this down here, just following the lines that are there? Oh, look what that gives me, something like an hourglass. Now, I call these the givens, okay, because they're strong and you can't escape from them. Now, what I'm doing is now extrapolating. If this is really the main line, it should repeat in more places in the picture already in many, many more places. So you can see that what I'm saying by doing these other lines here, so here's this one down the middle. You see, I have this thing going, I have this thing going, but it doesn't explain this, and it sort of leaves this guy out in the cold, and even this. So what if I take this one here, look at that, it lines up in a way that starts setting up what I'm gonna call a system, a logic. So this one comes sweeping in hard like this, this one's like in the middle, and this one changes direction. So this one direction here, and then this is like an hourglass going this way, and this one's almost straight. So there's a logic to that. So you'd expect now, if that's true, to have this one go this way and this one go this way, wouldn't you, as they feed out to the left and right sides of this. So uh, uh, we're finding them, though. I'm, not, I'm telling you what I've got, but I'm finding them. So I, you see this line right on the other side of this. Here's a line. Well, you can see this is also a line, isn't it? And it goes and goes and goes. And there it goes, could be said to pick up here. And in fact, it does pick up there, so to speak. This one's already being used up in this one. And, um, and, and uh, this one over here, you see there's a corner thing here. We're going to try to use that, and it goes to a blob. So that's, that's this thing over here. And you can see if I draw those lines, there's a certain kind of feeling to that, right? It's an hourglass that squeezes out from the bottom and oozes up and opens up to the right. Okay? Hourglass. Bottom, squeeze. And, and by the way, one of the reasons we do this, this is, and by the way, this is called a thumbnail, 
And the reason you do it is you can hold it in your brain. You want a complicated one, right? The main line isn't complicated. It's a main line. But so what we can see by main line doesn't necessarily mean a line. It means a, a generalized movement or a thrust or a linear idea, if you want to call it that, okay? And you want it to have life and you want it to have, uh, if you can, you want it to have, uh, but you want to have beauty if it's there. You know, the kind of beauty that's there in particular is beauty everywhere. So you just got to be able to find it. Follow that Angian concept. He says, you, you draw a leg and see ugly. I draw a leg and see beautiful. I don't care how ugly you see it. I see beauty. Something like that. I've taken liberties with the way he said that, which is really a no-no per my well-disciplined teacher. But now we're talking secondary lines. Okay, I'm, the, again, we're using the word givens, okay, given. You know, if you're in math, if you're in algebra or whatever, you're doing, a, 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 trying to figure out a formula, you're given X, right? Or you're given these, you're given X as part of a formula and, and uh, or I'm sorry, you're giving certain things in a formula, but if X is assigned a value, we call it a given. So it's a given that this is that value, and then we're gonna to try to figure out something else. I didn't say that very well, but follow me. If you're not in mathematics, you'll find an easier time following it when I show you here. So this line here, you can't escape from. That's this. You cannot escape from this line. You shouldn't ignore it. So here's how's my hourglass doing here? How does it like that line? Well, it's not unpleasant with it, right? And but it's but we got to deal with this line too, right? There's something happening here, and I'm saying literally like right across here, and that's what I'm calling this one. So this is the first of the two givens. This is so strong that you have to deal with it. And lastly, this one here is so strong that you got to deal with it, or something about this, this, and this is a directional mass, okay, a directional uh, continuum, all things taken together, it travels sort of like that. And I should have put that third line in here, I hope I did in the second one. Okay, so let me just show you the third line, so that, here it is here, see this red line? I took that to be the top of the trees, there's not a red line anymore here. Uh, I took this to be the bottom, that was the given, that was the given, and then what happened is I saw that uh, from points here to here to up here, that's this one. You see that. So it's this, by the way, these travel from points. Otherwise, it's not. You can just say it's a main line, but you have points that it's trying to work with, and you don't shouldn't have to change your composition very much, okay, to get this to work. So this is a point, right? And remember, remember the word point. And so you can see that this is also a spot between two darks. There's a spot. And so that's an easy place to say these things make a line. These points make a line, okay? That's not the same thing as a line that's a continuous silhouette, is it? But they still are what we work with in composition. There's always this continuous line and the line formed by dot, 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 dot. That's this line, right? I keep remembering that, right, when you talk about angles, when you talk about a linear thing. A long line doesn't necessarily mean a continuous hard line or a continuous silhouette like this one produces. All right, and so we go up here and we see this one and this one. And you see there's a slight downward movement to that. Oh, so we have an upward and we have a middle word and then we got our horizontal one and then we got a down one and we sort of would expect this one to go down even more, right? And so you're seeing like the equivalent of a, a little bit like the equivalent of a set of spokes on a wheel, right? And if it doesn't feel bad, if it feels okay, if it feels good with the... Uh, as much as is there, if it feels good with your main stuff, then it is good. I might be inclined to ask myself whether I could start a game that goes this way and this way, turns this way, and then this way, and then comes starts going back again and, and forms a, you know, the, where this, where the line countering this line would angle this way. So you could have that happen and it's your, it's your choice base, but it will be based on what's in front of you. You'll just have to see how this works out. Now, let me ask a different question or let you, me have you ask a different question, as it were. Uh, um, what, uh, what choice do you have in terms of main lines? Do you have a choice? I mean, the, the truth is you do, right? As I said, I didn't have to pick, I didn't have to pick this over here. It was dictated to me in a way, but I had a, a sort of a symmetrical, potentially a symmetrical picture. I could have moved over and put this guy more in the middle, but uh, I'm just taking this as a given painting, and I'm saying, how can I, how can I make this one work, or at least uh, bring it, bring it into harmony with itself? But I'm saying, don't have this as a fixed and hard idea in your mind. Just watch and watch and see which one explains the 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 the. the um, uh, how do you say it, which ex explains how things hang together, which, which ones, uh, which lines will explain more, 
area. So let's let's do it this way. You can see this one explains this. This is an easy one to see. If I if I do this, we could argue that if we do this into this, we have a logic. But now, if I say this here, that's this one right here. If I say that, then I go over to here and I say there's this one too, and look at that one, and look at they go well together. It begins to look like a system, right? And that's the sort of thing I look for. I want it to be repetitious enough so that so that it covers most of the spots in the painting. And then I want to extend it. So if I were to add something in the painting, I would know exactly where and why to do it. It would have to do with the linear progression. You talk about rhythms, by the way, the timing between these, these things winds up being curious and fascinating. It's, 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 these are lines that are of a set of a system, right? They're, they're, they're of a set. They are a system. And uh, you'll find that there's a certain, like these are, this is close, this is further, this is way further, that sort of thing. And you're going to find things like that in, our, in a system, and you're going to find certain beauty in those relationships. Now, I want to say something else, too, and that is that painting is intuitive. This stuff is all intuitive, except it's intuitive use of a science, right? So what's the science? The science is there is a main line. The basic premise of all composition is that it's, of all painting, is that it's basically value spots, color, and linearity, if you want to call it that, the spatial, the two-dimensional world. And I'm just giving you aspects of the two-dimensional world. The two-dimensional world does what we call main line, there'll be a tendency for a certain unity already in the picture in front of you. And it's your job to hunt it up. Let me put this in another way. For example, if I decided that this was the main line, I could have willy-nilly just plugged in a big bunch of blacks, darks up here, right? And just built myself a really nice line this way, this way. And, and the counter line would be something going this way based on the massing in of some darks up here. I could have just done that, but I don't like to, if I think a thing is pretty good, I just want to see if I can leave it in good health, right? <laughs> Not turn it into a different place, different picture. If I can get away with it. If I can't, I'll try those things, right? We'll see what I do toward the end. I, that's not one of them, though. So background stuff, right? So now this is what I call reeling it in. And this is the... the um, so now what all these points are for, all these things here, they're set up so you can actually see all sorts of things that you have to confess are really happening. So these diagonals going opposite these, all of it moving like spokes, and they're doing it about here and about here and about here. What are they for? Well, so if you put something in, you don't put something into some funny place and then wind up with a with an angle you don't want. <laughs> uh, and and uh, believe me, I'm talking about about um, uh, the fact, the idea that that a whole painting can be taken over by a spot. Uh, I'll get to this in a minute. We can talk about that idea and, and problems that might be related to this already because I did that. <clears throat> I want to say another thing, by the way, and that is that painting, uh, painting, painting from life, has an element of chaos. It has an element of sort of the feeling of the natural is a feeling of like, oh, it looks like it just happened. We just walked up and what a good eye that guy has. He just keeps finding things that just happened. Well, and there's a certain amount of chaos that, 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 that helps us that, that to, to be to be uh, so, uh, for us to feel that it's a slice of life. And, uh, uh, excuse me, that, but a certain amount of chaos is desirable, right? In other words, you don't want to control everything. I, and I've said before, it's like the whole idea of, you see conspiracies around you, but you have to, the idea of a conspiracy isn't that a conspirator can control every single piece of every part of the action of, say, if he's, if he's, if he's Napoleon or somebody? He just has to control enough of it until he can control the world, so to speak. And uh, so, so you know, people will say it with, you know, a blank expression, you know, it's impossible. It's like, you know, the CIA created the conspiracy theory. Did you know that? They created that word as a debunking term. But in reality, all through history, there's been conspiracies. Well, this here, what we're doing right here... <laughs> <laughs> is in that category. Let me get out of this. So let me just go back to these points. We're saying, if this, then that. And so if we're looking for a place to to place a person, say like this, and I'm, by the way, I got to get past this because I'm going to tell you what I'm doing first, second, and third. So I see here that this thing is way off to the right. I feel an empty spot. And I don't mean to say I automatically knew where to put it, and I still don't argue that this is the right size or precisely the right place. I'm just showing you how I play the game. But so this is out there. This feels empty. There's some need here. But let me just finish making this beautiful. This is where the person on uh, on, on a video responded to a video saying, 
uh, how do you know when to move things? Well, this is when you know when to move things. So I'm going to just ask you to look at this passage right here, what I've done to this. You see, this line goes up here, and it's, this thing just goes straight up the middle. It really kind of does damage. I mean, it's just this verticality like a pyramid. It does damage to this graceful line here. So what I'm trying to do is get myself a response. And I don't, didn't know. I just felt a spot here had a problem. So I plugged in a, a dark, that little round blob there. You might be able to make that out. And, and it, it began to do the job. It began to get me around this corner in a graceful way. By that little bit of plugging, I sort of rounded the shape. But then I realized it really didn't have enough interest. So I, and I also saw that I had trees over here that had, uh, needed some support. So I put a couple sticks in there to support the trees, to support that idea, to let the trees have some, some, some play. And now what I have is an area, what's called it's a spot of interest, an area of interest. That strength of that interest, if you don't count this, I should have left this thing out for a minute. If you don't count that, this spot of interest is the right, this is where you really want your eye to go. Right now, it's just going up here somewhere and maybe even get sidetracked over here. So we've enhanced this area of interest. This is such a huge thing to think. This is the primary interest. This is sort of the center of interest in the moment. It's certainly the strongest interest. But it were, well, I shouldn't say that because you could argue that this is, but we're trying to build from this one. So what I'm trying to do is get myself into this main line. There it is, rounding it up and powering up an area that really is in exactly the right place on this line. So this is very elegant, right? This is now becoming quite beautiful. And now this guy feels like it actually feel, is doing the right thing better than before. This guy even feels like he's doing the right thing. Now you can do more fine stuff on this, but as I said, just keep in mind the idea of a little chaos. Uh, you just can't have, it, can't have it be obnoxious. It might be problematical that this line, this vertical right here may, be, may not be helpful, but I'm leaving it alone for a few minutes and just dealing with bigger things, which is a very fundamental thing in painting. Think about big things, do the things that are important and do them well, and let's see if we need any more stuff. We might, but just keep on doing that that way. Don't be looking for four and five different little items to work on. Just do one thing better. So the one thing I did is I gave myself the main line, I really powered it to the right place and got it heading back in the direction that I sensed that it had, should head, if you follow that this whole thing is a movement this way. I hope you can see my arrows, guys, um, and I'm slowing myself down purposely. And then, of course, I, I, one of the reasons you have, one of the things you have in the main line is you have a, a gestural idea, right? Now, we don't, I didn't have to do her, her as, a, as an S or something like that. I'm saying it's her, it just happened to look like a her. I just did little ovals and filled up the area. I started with two darks and set a light on it and began to be something, and it doesn't mean anything to me, but... But you can begin to see, though, that there's a, there's a certain amount of play here that has a response to it, you know, if you want to put it from here to here, it has a response to it that feels like these lines. So you could say we've just, from say, say from someplace up here, we've just invented an, an in-between line, which I didn't plug in here, but it would be about like that. And, um, and then you can say, and so these lines here are flying like this and flying like this. So halfway between, there would be a line like this. You'd expect it to pick up points on this, on that set of points there and sure enough if i put this here and, and by the way remember i said i do it intuitively but i know what i'm doing and what i mean to say is i know what i'm trying to get to so the bottom part of this person you would say is on a line that goes this way see all these dots lining up with it lots of them right easy to say i've now created a long line a secondary line and and and, and involve myself in this line now you can do more to this you don't want to be much more obvious than that. You could, have, but you should search around and see if that person, should, and for mood and for expression, that might want to be a smaller person in a greater distance away. So that would be about elevating the feet and shortening the figure, you know, elevating the, the ground line and shortening the figure. So um, I don't know. Maybe I should just try a very brief. Uh, well, you can do this yourself. You know, I don't have to review it because <laughs> you can play this over again. I'm just trying to think if there's anything I've left out. So let me just start at the beginning. Let me start all over again at the beginning. And uh, I'm just going to look at this with you. I'll probably say things I can't resist. but So there's the spot. There's the viewing point. So she's picked a thing about this close. It looks like it might be a little close, huh, Sue? <laughs> and then uh, what I've done is pick the... Uh, I've framed it to match hers as best I can. So I have something to work with um, from nature. And then, and I'm showing myself that I have that. Then I'm just simply finding this strong main line. Uh, and I'm saying, you know, I'm look, it's, you're crazy to fight yourself, so you're looking for the givens. Okay, there you are. And, uh, and then the extension of the givens. <clears throat> it's called extrapolation, but, you know, any word you want to use, use a word that's good for you. It's just, 
following through, right, to see if enough things in this picture will support that. So you can easily see that plenty of things do. It surprised me actually quite a bit how nicely this one did it. By the way, even in terms of main line, this line here, you remember we did this thing here and that thing there. Well, this little corner here is another one of those things right on the main line. I probably should have done that with you. Uh, oh, oh, I, I left something out here. I'll do it at the very end, okay. I mean, it's in the end. All right, so here we are again. Here's the secondary givens. Uh, the, se the secondary givens, I mean. So that's what I'm trying to say. It's this and this, but you could easily see how that could be said once you understand that you might be making spokes. Spokes that don't get all the way out to doing that, although you could, you could rationalize that they could, but I'm saying it has to cover enough points so you don't have to change the picture much or else you're, or else you're not really doing in that painting. You're doing something else. You're just making pictures up in your head. But so you see that. And, um, and then again, the idea of extrapolation, that is to say, of uh, following through and saying, well, if that's true, is there a logic? Remember that word logic, there, how things go to, this is, if this is gonna be a line, it has to be, have a certain unity of its own or it couldn't be called a line. If it's, it's not just a whole bunch of chaotic different lines, There's, those are all over a painting. That isn't your job. Your job is to find a primary line, one that you can really build a, you know, uh, and, and, and ex, uh, one that is the source of all the beauty linearly in the picture that you're gonna keep and you're gonna extend, okay? And then when you do a secondary line, it's about countering that line in a beautiful way. And so uh, there's gotta be a certain unity to each of these internally. The, the main line has its own unity. The secondary line has to have its own unity. Um, and so then I extended all these things out there and I could see all over the place. This is gonna be totally logical. It covers so many bases. It covers this, covers this. This, this it covered, these points here are covered. This line of course was insisted on. It covers this and covers this. And um, except for one thing. And so you can see what I did over here, I completely forgot. But do you see the trees I added here? Why would I have done that? Well, that was actually to get myself, to get this line here. To, so if I went out of the picture, then I, you see what I did this and this, I was creating a line going this way. Not so good. But if I put a, a, these little pinpoints up here, it, first of all, it does get me to three of these uh, on the plane here. So it's always threes is always a good thing. <laughs> because you can create rhythms with threes, right? And the timing distances between these things. But also if I get this high enough, plus the treetop, then I'm actually building on what would be the next line, which would be something up here angling down just a little more than this one did. Just a little more than the one below it did, okay? So uh, I'm hoping that'll, that'll get you there, but each time you put something in, you wanna look it over. You know, the hardest part of painting is to keep watching the whole. Uh, and in the course of making a composition, it's watching the main, watching the power line, watching the main, the, the main action. Never take your eye off the main action while you do other things. Uh, so yeah, and so that's you can see why that's I, I call that reeling it in. You can see why what I'm talking about at that point. So um, oh yeah, this I see this is here. I I, I didn't quite place this right. I don't think, but. What I did, that's what this black line stood for. It actually, you just see this tree thing group over here. So you can go from that to this and sweep around and pick these guys up on this curving line. At the same time, I've already shown you how this is lining up there. Even the um, head being on this line, see this down to here and back up to there. These are two, several points. They all maintain the unity of that movement there or even begin to slightly move up. But you, have, you do have to learn to see three things as a set and see any group of three and the general gesture they make. Okay, well, that's the main line. Uh, and uh, in, a, in a whole new lay it out, play it out, uh, search it out uh, explication. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, it will contribute. Um, I do have to add one thing and that is that contribute to your, what, your work. Everything I've done is a product of the studies I've d done, and it's a product of my own work and search. And nothing about what I'm saying is out of the definitive book. You, you all, you know, when you're studying, don't look left or right to find out who the God is of this universe. It isn't me, it isn't, it's someplace else, right? It's, uh, he knows who he is, and, don't, and I know it ain't me, so. But if you say that about anybody, anybody you're looking at who tells you compositional things, if you read books, if you watch my stuff and say, this is absolute, this is what I've discovered up to this point. You need to work it out and see if it actually makes sense to you. And that's what I really do want to see people do. I don't want to have 
people calling me up and saying, did you mean this and did you mean that? Follow these things, think them through and let yourself, let yourself be, be, uh, have a full understanding of them and then see if it's true when you look at great paintings. And that's what you should do next. Take these kinds of ideas into great paintings, take them out on, into the field and try them out out there. All right, well, there it is. And uh, well, yeah, it's <laughs> about the same as last week. All right, good. Um, I'm talking about the time. Do do uh, please feel free to comment. Uh, uh, of course, um, subscribe and uh, share. Share like crazy. And then, of course, any donation is really really helpful. Uh, I did learn that my um, my person doing the video with interview of Tom is, has just gone down to get a few more shots today uh, of the area. He's trying to make an actual sort of uh, uh, what would you call it a sort of short uh, documentary kind of thing. Um, and so he's trying to do it with some expertise. So Muslim had to filler. He needed some filler material. So I guess that's why we're a little delayed still. In any case, uh, please please enjoy the main line and and uh, and I hope this helps. All right. Good. Take care. Uh, next time.